Thank you to GitMind for sponsoring today's video. Hi everyone! Welcome back to my channel. And if you're new here, hi, my name is Sam and I'm a, an incoming third year medical student from the Philippines. And I make videos documenting my med school journey. So if you're new here and if you'd like to be part of the fam, please do subscribe to my channel. So for today's video, I will be finally sharing with you my personal study tips which greatly helped me survive my first two years in med school but the study tips can also be applied to non-medical students so I really hope that this video would be helpful to you so without much further ado let's start so I have here my laptop because I made a list so that I won't miss out on anything so my first tip is first to make a to-do list I don't know why some people sleep on this but it really makes a difference if you write your own to-do list whether it may be through your post-it notes, handwritten post-it notes or through your iPad or just type it on your phone. The important thing is you make a to-do list and you also need to be specific like for example, I want to study pharma because if you see a list of all the things that you need to accomplish, you will be motivated to tick something from that list. And also, it's the best feeling if you take off something from your to-do list after a long day because you know how much productive you've become. And for me, it really motivates me. And make it visible so that you will always be reminded that, hey, you gotta finish something. And it's in here. It's in this to-do list. So another thing about making to-do lists is that you get to keep track of your progress. So you may also want to specifically write the topics that you want to study for today and then it helps you keep track of all the topics that you have finished and also the topics that you still need to study for. Next tip is to put away distractions. It's really important right now because it's kind of hard to study from home because all of the distractions are there like our laptop, internet, phone, iPad, bed. So what I do is, if I really want to focus, I try to hide my phone as far as I can. And I used to live in a condo. I'm usually alone there, so I really turn off the internet. But now that I'm studying from home, I can't just turn off the internet because my family members are also using it. So what I do is, I kind of use this certain technique, which I'm gonna discuss in the next tip. And this greatly helped me focus. And also, back then, we can still go to coffee shops and library. I used to go to the library often because it's the only place where I can be super duper productive. But right now, we can't really go to the library. So, I'm making use of what I can do at home to keep me focused. So, the next tip is to practice the Pomodoro technique. I know that almost every YouTuber have shared this technique because it really works. It's wherein you can either study for 25 minutes, then have a break for 5 minutes, then continue again for 25 minutes. Or it actually depends on you. You can also study for 50 minutes, then have 10 minutes break. The bottom line is you set a time for yourself to study. Like when I say study, like focus studying without any distractions then you take a break where you can do whatever you want like check your social media for five minutes or ten minutes then go back again studying so it really it's really helpful especially when you're using an app that keeps track of your progress so i'm actually using a certain app which i'm gonna be showing you so the app I use for Pomodoro Technique is the Focus To Do app. This is a free app from the App Store. Then it sets your timer to 25 minutes of focused studying. So no distractions at all. So what I do is I let it sit or I place my phone in front of me so that I can monitor the time left that I need that I still need to study to finish the 25 minutes. Then it directs to Five minutes of break after the 25 minute studying period and my fourth tip is to use flashcards so when they say that repetition drives long-term memory it's really true 
and uh, this is possible for me through using flashcards because through using flashcards you get to reinforce the information into your brain and which makes your brain remember it more often than not than other information that you just read once so I use the app Anki app A-N-K-I and you can use other apps there are apps also like Quizlet but for me I just prefer Anki but I'm not gonna go deeper on how you use Anki you can literally search in YouTube on how to use Anki and also if you've watched my previous vlogs it's the app that I usually featured on my previous vlog so if you wanna check it out I'm just gonna link the video below next is to make an outline you can either do this through your handwritten notes or through your iPad or through a website Basically, um, in making an outline means you chunk off the most important parts of the topic, then you just add the most important parts on the side so that your whole notes is very concise and all the notes there are just the important stuff. And also, it makes you visualize the whole topic as it is. And one website that I recently discovered is the gitmind.com wherein it is a free website i'm just gonna show you on the next clip so all you need to do is type gitmind.com onto your browser and it will direct you to a free website so no need to install and no need for premium accounts so gitmind is a free mind mapping and flowchart tool i'll also be putting down the link onto the description box if you want to check this website out so let's just click get started so once you click it you will be directed to these templates that are free and available for you to use so there are a lot of templates which you can choose from but because in med school we are usually asked to make a concept map for diseases i'm gonna be choosing this template for pneumonia so in order to use this just click the use template in the upper right corner and you can easily just edit this template. For example, if you want to change the diagnostic workup to pathophysiology of pneumonia, just click it and change it to pathophysiology. Then if you also want to edit the text under pathophysiology, you just you can just easily click it, then erase the text and add the desired text that you want. You can also edit the text using the outline button, wherein for example, here as you can see the shortness of breath, if you want to change it to difficulty of breathing, just type in difficulty of breathing on the outline, then if you exit it, you will notice that the shortness of breath already changed to difficulty of breathing. Then if you want to add another text, you can just click the floating node, then draw a rectangle, then change it, for example, monitoring of treatment. Then you can just easily add another node or a subnode by clicking the insert subnode. And you can add another text which pertains to the monitoring of treatment. So all of the templates are easily editable. So you just have to choose the template that works best for you. And the sixth tip is to hydrate yourself. I can't stress this enough but water is life. And let's always hydrate ourselves because it really helps us focus and it really helps our brain work optimally when we are hydrated and also aside from water we also need some snacks because we need glucose for our brain to be able to process information so always have water and snack while you're studying don't study if you're hungry because you can't concentrate second to the last tip is using mnemonics i know you've probably heard about it but i literally just used it when i was studying for my board exams and also when i started in med school because i was not a fan of using it on my un undergrad days 
because I didn't realize how useful it is. So basically, through using mnemonic, when you are memorizing a lot in med school, you really need to make mnemonics in order to memorize the important one. Some people don't use mnemonics because they are just literally born a genius that they don't need mnemonics because they can literally just memorize everything. But in my case, I'm not a genius so I'm using mnemonics instead. So. If you've probably heard about it, then you should really use it. And for my last tip, we should first ask wisdom and knowledge and guidance from our Heavenly Father through prayer. So, I really notice the difference. Like when I pray, I pray that God will help me study the important information that would be included in our exam. Like. I pray that he would guide me to stu because in med school you will really be overwhelmed with a lot of things to study and to memorize so you ask guidance from God to help you only focus on the things that would come out on our exam and also I pray that while I'm reading my notes I would be able to understand it and also I pray that he would help me retain the information that I've studied for as much as we pray before we start our exams. We should also pray before study. So that's my last tip. So those are the tips which gave you survived my two years in med school. And I really hope that this video would be helpful on your studies as well. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And also please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. See you in my next one. Bye!